the average year is still now? If it's like I, I, I learned a lot. I'm like a sponge, you know. I like to learn. I go to the gym. I try to talk to fighters, talk to trainers, you know. I learn from everything. I'm not the guy. It's like, oh, you know, every everything, you know. It's like I've been in a sport for a while. No, I'm just listen, trying the things they, they tell me to do. If it suits me, if it's, and I'm okay with that, I will do that. If it doesn't, will work, still try and we'll see. I think I improved in everything, you know, even in this, if I was not fighting in the ring, I improved a lot of, in the training because I, even I got like with Virgil, you know, it's it, it's supposed to be, you know, hard fight. So I was, I was going in the training like through the hell, you know, I hated training at the end because it was like a hell. So like same now, same now, always I'm doing these things, you know, just to push myself. So, yeah. Now you're fighting on arguably the biggest card you know, in boxing this year. Is there any pressure for you to put on a spectacular performance? Yeah, that's for sure. I want it, but it's not. I'm not going to push for it. But of course, I want it. You know, it's Cinco de Mayo. You know, Mexican Independence Day. It's like fighting on Canelo card in Las Vegas. I even took the picture in 2021. I think that yeah. I, I, I said I will fight here one day, and here we are. You know, it's like I was manifesting the things. So I'm happy, and of course, I, I want to come with something spectacular that I'm back. You know, and We'll go from there, you know. God willing, I'll get the victory. I'm not overlooking my opponent; he's a good opponent. I'm not fighting somebody, you know, just from the street. He's mm -hmm. like, like I said, two-time Olympian. He has like 300 amateur fights. So, he, and he's like, for him, this fight, I think it's do or die for the title for his country. He's going to give his all. But me also, I'm the same. I not overlooking your opponent, but you know, Terrence Crawford is a unified champ. Jerome this is the IBF champ. It looking like Terrence Crawford is moving to 154 pounds. What is your goal for a man standing on this at welterweight? What are you looking to do next? So first thing is the May part. Then we will see, sit and talk what the opportunities come, you know, because I'll be like a free agent, you know, because I have one one fight with BBC and I'm very thankful for this opportunity, you know. Basically, I started the, my career with them. So it's like, We'll see. It's a lot of things, you know, will will come after the fight. I'm not even thinking about that right now. Of course, I'm thinking what can be next. Maybe, but it's only in my head, you know, nothing more. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's, a lot of times it's our, us reporters that, you know, keep talking about next and next and next. But people always want to know, like, you know, what's going on in your head. Um, a fight that everybody's been talking about you and Jerron in this. Is that something that with him going over the match room, is that real? Like, can that actually happen within the next year or so? Yeah, of course. Look, now everybody is working with everybody. Look, Saudis made like from Frank Warren with, uh, with Eddie here to work, you know, now they, I saw something, you know, PBC is going to work with, with, with them. Match room mm -hmm. also working with them. So basically, everybody is working for a big fights, good fights, you know, and basically for the fans. So it's good for everybody, you know. It's not like you're on this street, on that street. So I think everything is possible, and I'm I'm for it. That's for sure. If it were to happen later on this year, how does that fight play out? Yeah, I will do them. I know he's a good fight. He's a great fighter, you know, and he's like very talented. But I'll take my chances also, you know, I train hard and I believe I can beat him. Now, you, like, it seems like you you just don't care. You just want to smoke. But he's a guy that's kind of struggled to get fights like yourself. Why is a man who's standing on just willing to hop in there? Yeah, because I believe in myself. I train and it's like, it should be like that, you know, like back in the days, like 80s, everybody fought everybody, you know, you lose, you come back. It doesn't matter, you know, so... It can only be one winner and how you know who is the better guy. It's only when you are fighting them. So you can fight, you can lose, then you can come back, you can fight again. And even if you win, you move forward. It's like everybody has opportunities, you know, just like everybody. I think it's scared because like promoters do this, like, oh, if you are lo you lose, then you that's it for you. Basically, because of the O, oh, you know, Floyd's, Floyd's era, it was the O, oh, you know. But back in the days, look how many good fights we had, you know. Right. Like, 
you know, Gatti, Mickey Ward, let's say, they have how many losses? They have got, like, not only one loss, you know, they had losses and they bring the good fights, you know. Every Hagler, you know, everybody, like, doesn't matter. Do you think that protecting the old mindset is destroying the sport? Yes, yes, that's for sure. Look at UFC. They have, like, five losses, seven losses, ten losses. Doesn't matter. Run it back, go, win. Win title, lose again, go back, doesn't matter. What's the about? Oh, I don't understand. And uh, I don't even care. Let's say I lose at some point. I'm not thinking about that. I want to win. Of course, I'll do my best. But, you know, I'm also a realistic guy. Anything can happen. You can wake up at the fight day and you can get sick or something. And you don't want to pull out of the fight because we are warriors. We have that mentality and we have to go, you know. We have responsibilities and what can happen not you lose you come back it's not the end of the world it's just yeah they're always crazy for me